Hey G Bonsai audience, I realize I haven't posted a video in a while. I'm gonna try to get back at it. Uh, I thought of a really simple way to show why we have different hours of daytime and nighttime in the winter versus summer using just a simple globe. So let me show you. Okay, for this demo, I want you to imagine that this globe, that we are looking at the Earth from the sun. So whatever side, everything that we can possibly see is in daytime because it's facing towards the sun. So I put a little mark there for our location and I have the axis of the Earth tilted towards us. So this is Northern Hemisphere summer. So the position that I have is showing where the Earth would be in its orbit at the summer solstice. And so here's what I wanna look at. So let's take a look at this little dot and we want to count the total number of hours that this little dot is facing towards the sun. So basically, every time we can see this dot, it's daytime. And so since we've got it at the summer solstice position, I'm going to line it up with, this, uh, with the axis bar we have there. And we're just going to count. Now, conveniently, these lines of longitude each correspond to one time zone. So we can actually count these lines of longitude going north to, uh, sorry, here we go. These lines of longitude, which run north to south, we can actually count these in terms of just hours. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start here, and we're gonna count. So how many hours are we exposed to daylight? We've got, let's go one way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, starting to lose the red dot, it's right up here. Eight-ish, okay, about eight. So you kind of lose track of the red dots. Maybe let's call it seven and a half hours. So now we'll go back to center and we're gonna count the other direction. So we go one, two, three, four. Again, I'm counting the uh, 15 degrees of longitude each. Five, six, seven, and a half again. So you can see the red dot is just barely up there. So about seven and a half again. So that means on the summer solstice, we would be getting about 15 hours of daylight. Now watch, I'm gonna turn this around. So now it's the other side of the globe. And right away, we can see that this dot is going to disappear a lot quicker. So I have, there's our red dot up at the top. It's a red dot, and we're gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna have to use the, the axis pole at the top to count. So we're gonna count, ready? One, two, three. Oof, man, that wasn't looking good. Four, four hours, and then the dot disappears. And now we'll count the other side. One, two, three, and about four again, pretty much disappears again. So this is why we don't get a lot of daylight in the winter time. So what this model is showing is only about eight hours, four plus four, about eight hours that that dot is above the horizon. So we can go, you know, if you look at going through a day, sun shining in England and eventually we get sunrise and then the sun is really low in the sky, which you can see it's really not direct. And then eight hours later, that dot disappears below the horizon. If you contrast that, with summer side, now it's summer, it's daytime in Europe, and then boom, the sun rises, but it's still daylight in Europe at the time the sun comes up for us. And then we go through the day, the sun is shining pretty straight on during the middle of the day. You can see how straight on the sun would be hitting that. And then the sun will gradually disappear, and 15 hours later, we lose track of our dot. So a much, much longer string of the, earth, of the Massachusetts being exposed to the sunlight. And very simply, that is why we have daytime and nighttime and why that, those hours are different throughout the year. That's it. Hope you enjoyed it.